6.5. Being able to apply trigonometry and Pythagoras' theorem to two- and three-dimensional problems. This is part of my ultimate revision guide for further maths GCSE, the geometry section. Um, this index button here will take you back to the index for geometry and any questions that exam questions that I've covered on the further maths uh, exams will go in this bar down here for you to practice with. Okay, so um, things we need to be aware of. Um, the phrase elevation and depression are important. Elevation meaning um, from the horizontal, how far up you are from the horizontal. Depression means from the horizontal, how far you're pointing down. So the angles of elevation is how far above the horizontal or horizon and depression, how far below. Angles always been degrees. Um, you, you can use other methods to solve questions if you uh, if you know how to do it, like using similar triangles. Okay, I'm going to go through. I'm going to go through three examples for this, and like I said, any other questions I've got on these topics, this topic, I'll put into here. So um, we've got a standard ship question and a pyramid question, and then we're going to uh, have a third question to do with elevation depression. But I'll come on to that in a bit. So let's start with the first one, a standard ship question. So um, pretty classic question here where you have um, to draw your own diagram. The question is given in words and you've got to figure out what's going on. So start off with always a good idea to draw yourself a little diagram. So a ship travels uh, 15 kilometers due north from sea. So if we start at sea and we go due north from sea And we're going uh, 15 kilometers that way. So that's north. And then we're going to go um, due east from Port D. So that was D. I'll, I'll label that in a second. Oh, to Port D. Sorry, this is going to be Port D over here. So slightly bigger over to this side. So that's Port D. And we've got to work out the bearing of D from C. So we've got to work out. If we were going straight um, to D from C, what would the bearing be? Now bearings are measured clockwise from north, so we're trying to work out that angle. So we know that's 15, we know that's 18 kilometers. So this is a bit of standard trigonometry here, where we've got an angle, two sides. So we label it up with the hypotenuse, the opposite side, and the adjacent side. And then we just figure out which of the rules we're going to use. So we um, Sokotoa. I don't know if you use formula triangles for doing these or you, you just um, know how to use the rules. The rule we're going to use is the tan rule because we want the opposite side and the adjacent side we want to find the angle so that's the tan of the angle um, let's call it C, so this is the angle at C. That's equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side I'm going to get 18 over 15. So to find C, we need to do tan to the minus 1 of 18 over 15. So bring in a calculator. So tan to the minus 1, shift tan 18 over 15. There's the bracket. And we get that. So C is 50.1944. So on. So we'll just call that approximately 50 degrees. Now, if we want a bearing, oh, can't move the calculator. There we go. If we want a bearing of D from C, we need to know this angle. So that's 50 degrees, but the bearing must be written in three digits. Bearing is zero five zero. Okay, so just just applying standard trigonometry to a, a, a worded question. Something you've got to get used to, but you probably should have practiced that for, for standard high level GCSE maths. Okay, question two. We've got a pyramid, um, square base. So we've got five and five all the way around. Um, V is directly above the centre, the height of the pyramid is 9, which we're told here. Work out the angle between the planes 
A, B, C, D, and V, A, B. So if we're trying to work out the angle from this line coming down to here, from up there, and that's quite difficult to draw that and make that clear. So let's, I'll try, but um, so that that side there and the plane at the bottom. So we're looking at this triangle in here. Now the, the hardest part of this question is to visualize that triangle and to see what it actually looks like. So the height of the triangle is going to be the height of the pyramid, which is nine. Um, this part of the triangle coming out from the center to the edge. Well, we know this is five and this is in the middle. So that makes this 2.5. And uh, this uh, side we don't actually need to know, I don't think. What we do want to know is this angle. This is the angle we're trying to work out. We're trying to work out that angle in there between this plane, this flat side, and this flat side of this pyramid. So that angle in there is what we're trying to work out. I'm going to call that x. That's right angle. So once you have, I mean, this triangle is very easy to solve the angle, but to actually figure that's the angle you need it takes a bit of practice on these sort of questions. So um, using our Socotor rules, this is the opposite, this is the adjacent, this is the hypotenuse. So we're going to use the tan of x equals opposite, which is 9 over adjacent, which is 2.5. So x is going to be 10 to the minus 1, 9 over 2.5. So let's bring the calculator in. Just type that in. So 10 to the minus 1 of 9 over 2.5. And we get 74.47. 74.5 degrees. Okay, so that's the angle between the planes. So when you're doing planes, what you really got to do is trying to figure out the right angle triangle between the two planes and then maybe draw that separately and solve it from there. Okay, the third one. So here we're going to look in look at angles of elevation and work out the height of the tower AB. So we're told that um, from point C, the angle of elevation uh, of the tower is 38 degrees, and then from point D, the angle of elevation is 29 degrees. The distance from C to D, from here to here, is 50. Okay, so we're going to, question three, we're going to work on angles of elevation. So we're told everything we need to know is on the diagram anyway, apart from the fact that um, C to D is 50. And we're trying to find out AB, which we'll call X. Okay, so when we're doing this sort of thing, puzzles, this, this is quite a difficult question, I think. So, But um, what we need to do is to write down what we know. So um, we've got uh, an angle here. We're going to use this 50 somehow. Now this 50 is the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle. I don't know any angles in here, but I do know that Pythagoras, if I know this side, if I call this side A and I call this side B, I know that A squared plus B squared equals 50 squared. So that might be useful. Um, also, now I've labeled that up, let's just, just work out what this is going to be. So we've got opposite side and adjacent side, and that's equal to tan of 29. So tan 29 equals the opposite side, which is x, over the adjacent side, which is a. And I've also got the same for b, tan 38 is the opposite side x. Tan 38 is going to be the opposite side x over the adjacent side b. Okay, now what I'm thinking here is if I rearrange this so I can work out A from this equation and I rearrange this to work out B and then put them both into this formula, then I'll only have X's that I need to solve. So if I rearrange this, um, I get A equals um, X over tan 29 
you can you can just switch these two over. If you imagine this is a fraction, we can swap diagonals on a fractions over an equal sign. Or if you want to think about it the long way around, you can times by the a to make it a tan 29 and then divide by the tan 29 to get a equals x over tan 29. And that's similarly for this one, b is going to be equal to x over tan 38. So putting those both into this equation, we get x over tan 29 all squared plus x over tan 38 all squared equals 50 squared. Uh, multiply out the brackets, we're going to get x squared over tan 29 squared. Now when you do, um, you could put a bracket around there, put a square on the end, but the standard way to represent a, a trigonometrical expression squared is to put the little 2 next to the tan or the sine or the cos. And then we get the same here, tan squared 38, and that's equal to 50 squared, which is 2,500. Now we need to deal with these these num these are just numbers. So um, to be able to combine this, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by tan squared 29 and tan squared 38, and um, I'll do that over here because I'm running out of space now. Let's just put a line there and take this over to here. So I'm going to have if I times by tan squared 29, that's going to multiply this by tan squared 29 and this by tan squared 29. Um, this one's going to cancel, that's why I'm doing it. And then I'm going to multiply everything by tan squared 38. So this is going to be tan squared 38, this is going to cancel, and this is going to be tan squared 38. So I'm going to end up with, if I do it properly, um, x squared tan squared 38. Gosh, I can't remember writing tan squared 38 plus x squared tan, 20, tan squared 29 equals 2500 tan squared 29, tan squared 38. Um, and then I just need to combine those and I mean this could all be done with numbers, you can work out what this number is. I'm going to keep it, I need to just do a little bit of factorising here, I took the x squared out and I've got tan squared 38 plus tan squared 29 equals that. tan squared 29, I'm running out of space, tan squared 38. And then I'm going to divide by this. So I'm actually going to type that one to the calculator. Let's bring the calculator and see if it can cope with this big expression. Just wondering if there's an easier way of doing this. It looks a bit complicated, but um, I think this is the best I can do. So we've got this expression here divided by this one in the bracket. So let's try and type all that in. 2500 times tan uh, 29 squared times tan 38 squared. Now it doesn't matter, you put the, the 2 next to the tan on the calculator, so you just put it at the end. All over tan 38 squared plus tan 29 squared. I'm feeling I'm at, must have made a mistake there somewhere, so a big long calculation. Okay, so that gives us x squared. So that tells us x squared is approximately 510.95 something, so x is going to be the square root of that, so let's just square root that answer. So x is approximately 22.6. Okay, does that seem to make some sense? It's well, it's in keeping with the 50, certainly. Um, that's, quite, that's going to be longer than that. So, okay, so that's that's a very complicated question um, to be able to do that. So, but when you start, if you just write down the rules that you can write down, and hopefully it will come together where you can substitute things in and figure something out.